Hello, I'm Ruth McCabe and I'm the project manager for the Dementia Friendly Fife project. This present presentation today is to tell you the story of how we got involved with the Masonic Lodges in Fife. And I'm joined on screen today by Stuart Quigley, who's the Provisional Grandmaster for the Lodges in Fife, and Gerald King, who is a Mason and who has also been an exceptional friend to the Dementia Friendly Fife project. So the story basically starts when I met Jerry quite unexpectedly, quite by chance. Um, I was delivering a dementia friend session in a village in Fife called King Glassy, and it was an open session and you never know who's coming along to these sessions. So this particular one was aimed more at young people, but Jerry pitched up with his wife and two kids. And unbeknown to me at that point, Jerry had a diagnosis of dementia. So we delivered the session and during the session, Jerry told us that he had dementia. So he shared a bit about his experiences, which I have to say was exceptionally helpful, particularly for the young people who really didn't kind of know an awful lot about dementia. But having someone in their audience who was living with it made it all really real to them and it all became very true. So Jerry and I, uh, we did the session and I said to you, Jerry, thinking, well, I'll never see you again. So alongside that session, the Masonic Lodge in Leslie, the Glen Rothes Lodge, the Rothes Lodge it's called, it wanted to do a, a dementia friendly cafe. So they invited me to come along and speak to the Masons and deliver a dementia friend session there and with the people who were going to be running the cafe. So I goes along to deliver that session. This is only two or three days later. And here, here was Jerry. So again, we delivered the session and Jerry quite naturally told his story and what a difference it made to the understanding of the people who were actually in that room. So Jerry, what, what kind of, what motivated you to do that? What inspired you to come along and be able to tell your story so openly? Well, originally I came on to King Lassie because I wanted the, my children to, to, to know uh, a bit more about the dementia. Because I'd heard you were giving a, a wee uh, dementia friendly presentation and I thought it would be ideal to take the children along, um, which was a great time. And then I heard you were doing the one in Leslie and I thought ideal opportunity for me to start really just sharing, yeah, sharing my diagnosis with, with, with other Masons. Uh, uh, I've been in the Masons for quite a number of years, uh, thoroughly enjoy it, and it's something that I would uh, don't want to give up. And I thought this would be an ideal opportunity to actually just tell a few friends uh, what's actually happening. And everything just expanded from there, really. I mean, the Masons have been absolutely phenomenal. Um, I mean, we've, we've given dementia presentations to oh, well over a thousand people, but the Masons, have, have, have the uptake from the Masons has been uh, absolutely incredible and uh, the support for me personally, uh, it's been tremendous. I can't fault them at all. Fabulous. Thanks, Jerry. And Stuart, you came along to that Dementia Friends session at the Rothes uh, Lodge. So what did you make of it all and what motivated you to then take the message further? Yeah, um, that, that's right. Um, I became aware of it through um, just someone advising me that this meeting was going to happen. Uh, would I, as provincial grandmaster, uh, like to come along and just observe uh, with a view to is it something we could roll out to, to the lodges uh, and other members? So uh, I took that opportunity um, and it was good to be there um, and, and hear Jerry's uh, presentation because I think um, I thought that was the one that kind of hit home that this was someone who we all knew as a Mason in the province um, and we all knew well. And um, lo and behold, at the age of, uh, I think it was 55, mid 50s, 55, yep. uh, Jerry had, had, uh, had got dementia. And I think that was something that uh, hit home to us all that, you know, the thought that this was something that would be uh, uh, for the old age um, and it wouldn't affect any of us suddenly hit home how, how that uh, wasn't the case. Um, I attended that uh, along with other, I've been at other lodge meetings as well. Uh, I've been at other meetings with other folk from other parts of the community have been um, at the meeting and it was part of uh, just trying to get Freemasonry um, involved a bit more in local communities and local community action groups um, just to put ourselves out there a bit more. So I thought it's a great opportunity for not only doing that but also to spread out this work of um, the dementia and um, something that 
I knew very little about, and I knew members of the, the lodges knew very little about. But as we as we moved on through our journey, um, and then became aware that um, there was a lot of people who had a lot of stories about dementia, uh, relatives, friends, and uh, we've since found out um, very who knows about dementia, but another couple of brethren um, and their travels have come forward and have since been diagnosed with dementia, so we're helping to those brethren as well. So it's, it's been a great, great journey from there. So it started off quite innocently at Leslie, and it, it certainly moved on from there, and it's, uh, it's moved on quite a bit, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and over the, the well, we, we were actually quite active for the best part of a year, and over the year, we must have visited around 20 lodges. Half a dozen of them actually were able to get the Dementia Friendly Fife Award. And we've, we've turned at least 200 Masons into Dementia Friends. Now, I think the key thing about the Masons is that they're all men. And, you know, to have a conversation about dementia with a group of men who probably would never have wanted to talk about the subject has actually been quite phenomenal. It's been a huge opportunity to raise awareness, help understanding. And as Stuart says, we've kind of unearthed quite a few people in the lodges who are directly affected. And I think Jerry's openness about his story means that people see dementia in a very different light. My perception is that Jerry's basically shattered the stereotype of someone with dementia who's an older person, who's maybe not that terribly able and needs a lot of help and support where Jerry's quite independent. So I don't know how you feel about that, Jerry, um, in terms of changing the way people think and feel. Yeah, I think, um, to be honest, uh, introducing to the Masons hasn't changed the way they've treated me at all, to be honest. They're a kind bunch of people anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if anything, they probably be a bit more kinder because they're, they're a bit more um, supportive for me now, although they've been supportive anyway. But they'll make sure that I'm getting to my meetings, uh, offering lifts, uh, make sure I'm getting home again. Because uh, obviously through the diagnosis, I lost my driving licence. So uh, if it wasn't for these boys picking me up and taking me to meetings, I'd be stuck in the house all the time. And they've been fantastic that way. Um, I think it's just amazing that... Um, they've kind of stepped up to the mark because they're not scared to talk about it. They've been really, really open to, to, to listening to not just my story, but other people's story, um, embracing it uh, and taking it on board. They've been amazing. Uh, uh, and I can't fault them at all, Mike. Fabulous. Yeah, I would agree with that as well, Jerry. I think uh, one thing that does come out from that is, that, um, as you'll know, Jerry, for the past five or six years, uh, the Grand Lodge of Scotland uh, they have a nominated charity every five or six years, and for the past few while, it's been Prostate Scotland. And that was something which not many people spoke about was prostate cancer. Um, it was, certainly wasn't a topic you would hear um, at many Masonic lodges, but as it rolled out um, and we became more aware of it, and in fact, more brethren uh, actually had prostate cancer, um, it suddenly uh, was a topic we started talking about, which we'd never done before. Yeah. And I'm seeing the exact same with dementia, that um, dementia wouldn't have been something that we'd have spent any time on discussing. But because of the presentation from Ruth and Jerry, particularly the fact Jerry has dementia, um, we've now found a lot of other stories of people in similar circumstances. And, and now dementia uh, is spoken about and uh, the taboos and the restrictions on that have now disappeared. And people talk yeah. about it quite openly now. So it's certainly brought that into... Uh, the normal domain, if you like, and I think that's been uh, highlighted. Yep. And there's also a bit of a kind of practical element, hopefully, coming out of it. I mean, as well as their office lodge in Leslie running the cafe, we've used the lodge in Kirkcaldy for a meeting with other people with dementia who came from Liverpool. The the, ven the lodges could offer quite good venues for more cafes yeah. and more meetings, yeah. and yep. a lot of the Masons have offered to be volunteers and do things yeah. like driving. So there's a lot of very practical use that can come out of it. Um, and I've discovered that there's a, a, an almoner for each lodge and there's a, yeah. a benevolent uh, outreach programme in the lodges. Yeah. So again, yeah. if older people are struggling with dementia and can't get to the lodges, then someone can go and visit them. So there's a whole ripple effect to the whole thing. And although we've very much concentrated on Fife, we're just about to tackle the whole of Scotland, I think, um, in terms of making links with other lodges. That's one of the values of doing things on Zoom, of course, you can visit people, you know, electronically. But yeah. we do hope to spread the message even further 
Um, but it's been an amazing relationship, really kind of mutually supportive and beneficial, um, not to mention the fundraising that's gone on for places like Alzheimer Scotland and you know the On5 programme and things, and even our stand group, we've had some money. Um, yep. so the Masons is involved in Hill of Heath and they raised a thousand pounds for us um, in the yep. servicemen's club. So, so yeah, so it's been an amazing. So from a very chance, you know, encounter, there's been a whole lot of benefit, and we're still on the journey, really. I think, which is probably what's important. Yep. Yeah. What well, one, one meeting stands out for me, uh, Ruth and Jerry, you were both there. Was the meeting we had in the during the day at Reside, um, where we had I think it was about eighty five attended that meeting. But we also had um, uh, Don Olive from the Grand Lodge of Scotland, um, who's involved with uh, the care homes that we have. And um, she has now uh, been in touch with me. We, we've met a couple of times now. And the, the, the intention is that we'll do this type of thing more often. And as you mentioned there, Ruth, that it's now in the early stages of rolling out to the remaining uh, regions and lodges in Scotland. And the Grand Lodge of Scotland are, are on board with us as well. They see a, a very worthwhile uh, venture. And um, in the next few while, we'll be pulling things together to roll it out to the other provinces so that in some time in the hopefully not too distant future, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll roll this out to everybody. But I remember that meeting in Rasai when there was uh, that big uh, number turned up. There was one man who was a visitor to the province. Uh, he came in and um, he had never really spoken about dementia. He'd only recently been diagnosed with it. A couple of his friends brought him over, and he actually was uh, enthused enough to actually stand up and talk about it and talk about his condition. And afterwards, he said he would never have done that normally mm -hmm. um, with anyone, but he had enough um, enthusiasm to do that in front of all his friends and brethren that he stood up mm -hmm. and done that. And he mm -hmm. felt so much better that he knew there was people out there that could help him now. And I've spoken to him since, and uh, he still remembers that day. I still remember saying, actually, Helped and changed his, his outlook on the whole dementia world. Yep. I would agree with you totally, Stuart. And you took the words right out of my mouth. Out of all the meetings that the reason I have done, yeah. the Rosside yeah. one probably sticks out as one of the one of the most amazing ones I've, I've, I've experienced. There's been others, but Rosside uh, is the one that sticks out the most. Uh, yeah. Just uh, sitting there having a conversation with Ruth in front of all those, those, those guys, like eight odd people, like, and that gentleman standing up. Uh, it was amazing. And you could have heard a pin drop. And yep. the, 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 the attentiveness of all these people, and not one of them was sitting there chatting away with each other. Everyone was just totally fixated on what was being said, and it was quite an amazing experience. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yep. So, yeah, so a chance encounter led to yep. all this, which is marvellous. So, thank you, yep. thank you both. Yeah, pleasure, absolute oh, pleasure. It's a pleasure to be involved in it, and uh, as we move on, as you mentioned, there's something I'm going to. Certainly ensure that we make available our, our lodges are sitting during the day empty. And I've uh, I've spoken to people at all the lodges to say if, if we get an inquiry from the dementia group that we should uh, try our best to accommodate and uh, rather than lodge being empty, uh, let it be used for groups to meet in the dementia world uh, to help things uh, go forward. So we're certainly pushing that forward uh, in the next few while. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you, Stuart. Yeah, so I think what we've done is we've shattered the stereotype and we've kind of made a huge difference. And that's all you can ask for, really, just to raise awareness and help people understand it a wee bit more. Um, and as I say, the work is ongoing. So I think probably one of the, the things to end on is to see how valuable it is to support people in being able to tell their story. Um, there's no doubt that a real person living with dementia, seeing how it feels, just makes such an impact. Mm. And I know that, Jerry, that's made a huge difference to you. It's given you quite a lot of purpose and things, hasn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, uh, when I was first diagnosed, I kind of hid away for the first four or five five weeks just sitting in the room and looking at the same four walls. And I was in a pretty dark place. I was only when I met you, through you, and getting the opportunity to go out and speak to, to Stuart and all the boys in the lodges and, and all the workplaces and schools. That I saw, actually gave me a purpose again. Like, it makes me feel as if I'm actually contributing to society. Yeah. Uh, which is a, which can't be beaten. No, it's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. thank you, thank you, everybody.